Hi guys and welcome this afternoon. Well it's afternoon here um, with me anyway, all the way over in Australia. Thought I'd, um, I've been making some ephemera, uh, mainly tickets and some little cards here um, with my paper scraps and I thought I'd bring you along to show you the process and um, make a few more with you this afternoon. As you can see I like the contrast because I like a little pop of colour um, or texture in my journals so I've made some tickets which is up here now all these were using the studio light stamp set which looks like that so it's got a row of tickets there and some other various tickets in there so it's really really easy to use because that's all you have to do you get your pattern papers so you pull out your scraps and just stamp on there and cut them out with the edges there I used um, my pinking scissors, so they're like a dressmaker's um, scissors that have got a jagged edge, but most of you will have some decorative scissors of some sort um, to cut along there, or you can use your intricate scissors and <laughs> if you want to go to that much trouble. I haven't perforated these ones yet, I do have a um, Tim Holtz perforator to do that, or you could get a pokey tool and just punch holes in those. But let me push those to the side and um let's get out our stamps and our scraps and see what else we can come up with this afternoon i thought i'd do a couple of um tickets for you just to show you what i've done with that lot but i won't be doing too many tickets because i've already got quite a pile as you can see so any of your papers i actually wanted some greens um to go with my journal I'm doing a nature journal at the moment so anything to do with nature I'm trying to sort of incorporate that a little bit so I might um, just start with these ones here I'm going to use the admit one ticket it's got the most um, vacant background and I'm going to be using some quite patterned papers here I'm stamping these with archival ink and I'm just using black. So I'll just cut one of those out just to show you that using your pattern papers just gives that little bit more of uh, interest for when you're going to put them with the clusters or just inside some little mini envelopes in your journal, some tucks. And this one has got a little bit of a curved corner, so you gotta do a little bit of manual work with this one. So you can see that it's just really got some just a little bit different to say a more plainer one that one's on uh, pattern paper as well but it's sort of a little bit more plain right, I might stamp a couple out with these other papers I'm not going to sit here and cut them all out with you guys because that would be just boring for you but I just want to show you how they do come up on different colors I do a few tickets here. I've got some actual um, more journaling cards to do using these papers as well. So you can pull out all your stamps. You could even do labels this way. Uh, labels look really good with a little bit of a patterned background. How good does that look with the leaves through it? could even stamp them in a different color depending on what you were doing with your journal and then by inking them up once you've cut them you'll just add more to it as well and that's it on the plain cardstock which looks really good as well and just do a couple, of, couple in this pink So 
So fish through your paper stock, get a little pile beside you ready. And then as you use each stamp, you can just pile it off and then work it through with your other stamps. That might be enough with that ticket. Just do a couple with this ticket as well. So this ticket here, um, I'll show you what one of these look like. So this was um, stamped on a lacy background and you can actually just use your scissors either end, your pinking scissors with that. So it come up really, really good. It's a nice, easy one to cut, which is what we like. bring your papers back through in a pile sort of like a little production line it's always good to have a pile of ephemera on hand when you're working in your journals rather than have to stop and start to make something so I like to have little bit of a stash with me this is beautiful paper on its own some papers it's nearly a um, crime to cover them up leaf ones as well. So if I was to cut one of these out just to show you again with the more patterned paper. If you've got a small enough little mini circle punch, you could probably use that as well. And there we go, guys. How good does that look? You could even team it with one of the others in your journal. They're just a little bit different, something a little bit more um, quirky in your journals. Especially, you know, these days a lot of people like to work with the more neutral colours, which I, I admit I do like myself. You either go bright, bright, or you, you stay with these natural, neutral tones. And this will just give it a little pop of colour without being too much, I guess, in your face um, type of thing. So this is the other card on this set, this one here. So we'll just do a couple with that, and then we'll move on to some bigger ones and see how they come out just do one one each of these I'll do two in that green because I really like that green in journals You don't necessarily have to go that way with the script you could go that way as well we might do two examples just to have a look how it comes out because today is all about experimenting as well I could just sit and do this all day it's so relaxing making ephemera using your stamps I want to do some collaging as well so that's I'm finished with that one 
I've got some more little like frame photos, uh, photo stamps. So this one, I don't know where I got this set from. Um, Squirrels and Frogs is the brand of it. Um, I have had it for quite a while, but I'm going to do a couple of the little square passporty type frames. And this will give you an idea if you're working with your label stamps. I'm, I'm not a pink person in the in the whole scheme of things but I do really like this dusty type pink I know a lot of people use that color for their uh, bridesmaids whether that or champagne these days so it looks really good on the plane as well I'm going to cut one out and bring it a bit closer for you to have a look at. Now you can cut right to the line or you can leave a bit of a border entirely up to you. I go fairly close just to highlight the frame. You're going to ink it anyway so it doesn't really matter how much of a border that you leave on that. But how good is that? And then you could add a little sticker or something like that and You've got some instant ephemera. With these ones, you can also line them up. So if you've got a pattern you particularly like, whether it's got a little butterfly on it or a bird or something, you want to get it in frame, you can move it around a bit. But bear in mind, I don't think that one's going to fit. Bear in mind you might um, use up more paper that way. Because even though they're scraps, we never ever want to waste scraps either. This is just on a map background which looks really, really good. give you an idea what I was talking about before let's frame it with that leaf and then let's cut it out I might have went just a bit off paper there but it won't matter glasses might help Great. so as you can see it's a picture in itself really just absolutely beautiful let's see if we can line up a flower How's that beautiful and as I was saying before if you've got a, a background like that one that we've done then you can just do a little sticker butterfly flower and you'll get a similar effect to that as well now I've got these border one I might do one with some flowers just off to the side and then I'll do one over the other side with it the other side 
just so you can see you can sort of like frame your own little artwork really Just gorgeous you could also another idea is if we stamped stamped that again which I will do just to show you get our pinking scissors and cut just out from that border And you make yourself basically a faux stamp and once you ink around that it'll just highlight that border as well so your imagination runs wild once you sit down and start crafting all the ideas just start coming out of the, out of the woodwork not real straight on that one So once again, just lace, lace work, highlight that. What else have we got? And on some more planar cardstock. And that's that one okay let's grab another one now this is a little frame um, I don't know the set that this one come out of but it'll just show you that you can use your any type of little frame stamp that you have if you're doing labels labels and another good way to do this just to have some different colored labels labels with some patterns on the background you could also stamp these in different colors your reds your greens your blues as you would do with your labels This one, of course, as you can see, is going to take a little bit more cutting out, a bit more patience. So I will do that later. I'm sitting and watching TV. It's usually a good way to do all your fussy cutting. As you can see, just work through your pile of papers that you've picked out. one up the top corner there let's see maybe just these are little six by six papers so you don't necessarily have to use scraps all the time if you've got papers that you really really love and you've got something that will fit on them use it so just put those to the side that's really not going to fit 
too much more on it and get them out of the way and pull in some other papers because I've got some bigger ones to stamp out. So the other two stamps I'm going to use are, these are both dark room door stamps. So one is from the eclectic stamp sets, which is that size. And then the other one is the frame, frame stamp, which is a little bit bigger and probably more postcard size, a tad smaller. So I'm going to stamp a couple of those out, which will make um, great journaling cards. If your cardstock's double-sided, like most of these are, you can always put some coffee dyed paper or even plain paper on the back. And then when you put them in a little tuck spot, they'd be good to just to jot down some journaling. Hopefully I've inked that one up enough. Uh, yeah, there we go. One of those out for you to have a look at. I might give this one a little bit of a border. You can also use a corner rounder to round the corners on these as well. Have a little bit of fun. I think rounded corners do soften them. But it's it's a personal choice really. I'll grab a little corner rounder. So you can see a great little card if you had coffee dyed paper on the back. I mean, you could even journal on that. It's fairly light. But um, just another thing to add into your ephemera. And you, so you can add to your little tuck spots or little envelopes. How yeah, will that fit? I don't think that one will fit. Well, it might do. I really like this map paper. To try and get some more of it. <coughs> Excuse me being winter everyone seems to have a little bit of something at the moment mine had a little cough that's popped up in the last couple of days so I'm hoping it doesn't turn into anything else but then we do have a couple of others in the house that um, are struggling with the flu a little bit so it usually does its rounds So as you can see, there's a little bit of green in this one. So I am working on a nature journal at the moment. So I like all these little pops of green. That we can have as we work through. And you would corner around. I like these little corner rounders. You get two in a set. They're Eco Tools. I'll um, try and put a link down the bottom of where I got them from. And they're good because you can turn them upside down. And especially when you've got a stamped image like this, you can go close so you're not cutting off the stamped image. But once again, you can see the difference. <coughs> it just gives you, excuse me, it just gives you a little bit of uh, different color. Add to your journals. If we stamp one on a plane, which I don't think that's it's not quite wide enough. This one might be. Stamp them on a plane. You could stamp different colours. This may not fit. A bit hard to gauge without me putting my head completely over the top, and you don't want that. Ah, oh, beautiful. So that's your plane again. So if I just show you the difference. 
I like it on the patterned. But then we also like some plain ones as well through our journal. This is like a music type paper. It's got little bits of pattern on it. So this will show you with the lighter tones. So you can still get a little bit of pattern, but it does feature more the um, stamp on that one. That's too bright. Um, just to have a look, I mean, entirely up to you. Let's stamp. Let's stamp it and have a look. Pick the lightest part, but it was the other side that I was going for. Yeah, look, that might be okay. But I am going to stamp the other side. do two of these ones and then we'll do a couple with the bigger one. Hopefully the big one will ink up okay. even add this to the front of a little journal book that you want to put in a belly band or in a tuck spot it's quite a good size great size for a journaling card as well you can put a little tab on the end of it and tuck it in somewhere in your journal if you want more journaling spots and less bulk I love the green in this paper. I think it was like an African series. I don't have too much of it anymore. Oh, mine just went off the end, but that's okay. If you have a mistake like that, you can I can ink that in black along there and you'll hardly notice it. And I'll just cut the other really close. So um, it'll just be a, a black border around we certainly won't throw it away because i absolutely love that paper this one's like a looks like a hessian or a canvasy type of pattern beautiful love that just do one on plain cardstock like I did with the smaller one and I'll put a um, photo up as well of all the ones once I've got them all cut out for you to have a look at and I'd love to see anything that you create throw a photo in comments Beautiful. Okay, if we are careful and line it up properly. Ah, oh, gorgeous. I'm going to cut that one out so you can see. Also, don't throw these scraps away. I know you don't, but you know you can stamp a word on there. You can round the corners, put an eyelet in there, make it into a tag. There's so much you can do with your scraps. You can make clusters with them. I might even do a cluster buster 
video as well because I am getting quite a pile. Gorgeous. So you don't necessarily have to have ticket stamps or frame stamps. I'm sure in your stamp sets there, it might be a flower with just like an outline that you could um, stamp out. That would look absolutely beautiful. Okay, so that's finished with that stamp. Oh, we've got one more stamp here. Um, I don't know where this one's come from as well. It might be, ah, uh, yes it is. It's in that um, similar one, the Squirrels and Frogs clear stamp set. So it's the one down the bottom here. Traveller's Notebook. If you've only got, say, a plain frame, then use your, and it doesn't have wording on it like this one, use your other word stamps or put some numbers on it. Anything to just add a little bit more interest to it. Beautiful. So that's what that's just going to be a nice square journaling card into your tuck spots. I don't know whether I'm going to get it on here, but I'm going to try it because I love this paper. Trial and error. <laughs> Let's hope it's just trial and not error. Oh, beautiful. Very close, but it's a scissor width apart, so we can still use it. Just working through all the spare spots that I can stamp this one and then we'll have a recap Go through let's do a let's do a bright green one don't really like this paper but I thought with something stamped on it it might look okay which it does And once again, it's green, so it'll go into my botanical journal. Okay, let's see how this one goes. So this is more framing, like we were doing before. Framing little artworks. Oh, that's beautiful. So if I cut that out... It's easy to see it when you've got all the extra paper cut away. Beautiful. We'll do a couple more. Always do things in mass because I think well while you've got your stamps out they're dirty your desk has a lot of stuff on it why not work through it because the days that you're working in your journal and you like to just grub for something you're going to have all of these to grub for actually here's a bit of vellum let's do that your vellum you could put a sticker on that as well once it goes over <coughs> excuse me something with a pattern on it you could have the little picture behind it you could put a photo in that or photo behind it in like a um, like a little film strip just on the edge how good is that okay I think I've pretty well much used up all the bigger pieces beautiful and if I just cut that out
just beautiful. But you can see how different they are. You got your postcards. So you can journal on the back. So you just put stick a bit of coffee dyed paper or plain paper or plain card stock. You could turn that in, put a little tab on it and, and you know, tuck it down beside something. Um, it's just possibly it could be a little tuck spot itself in your journal. Um, the possibilities are just endless with these. And look, they are so much fun. Have a go. Pull out all your papers. Pull out your stamps. It doesn't really matter what stamps you do and don't have. Just work with what you've got. Um, your little frame stamps are worth the investment because you'd be surprised how much you do use them. Um, especially uh, the smaller ones, the little label ones and things like that. So guys, I hope um, you've enjoyed this uh, video this afternoon. It was more a bit of a craft along, I guess, or, you know, a couple of uh, new ideas um, or how people do things a little bit differently than others. But hopefully um, you can use this and um, put them in your journal. Thanks, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.